A few weeks ago, Kanan, one of our riders here on B2B, pitched the topic of electric turbos. And I was like, that's a cool idea, but we can't. Those things are scam. Then our other rider, Claire, was like, no, they're for real. We should definitely do that. And then I was like, I respect both of your views, but I don't believe there is such a thing as an electric turbo. I showed them a Mighty Carbons video proving they were a scam, but then they told me Audi has been using them for a couple of years. And then I showed them a Cletus video with an electric turbo, but it made the car slower. But then they showed me a different Cletus video where it made the car faster. So I did a little more digging and found out there was some truth to their claims. So I did what any adult would do, and that is admit my mistake and agreed to make this episode. Today, we're gonna to cover the physics of traditional turbochargers, talk about parasitic losses, and explain how this once upon a time eBay scam has miraculously become a legit piece of power boosting technology. Or has it? Let's go. Thank you to Exer for sponsoring today's video. Everything is smart today. I'm talking smart phones, smart cars, and smart homes, and smart people like your boy. Well now, there's an even smarter wallet. This is the Exter wallet, and it was designed to improve the way you carry your everyday items. And since smart people, like myself, <laughs> Love to use checklist. I've developed this handy dandy extra checkster to show you why you need one. It's got quick card access. I just push this trigger and a kaboom. Every card you need right at your little fingertips. And there's even this tracker. With this beauty, you don't even have to worry about losing your wallet. It's got an app that allows you to see where your wallet is anywhere in the world. And it can be pinged with your phone. Hey Siri, where's my wallet? It's even got voice command with Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. And thanks to a solar power battery, the tracker gets up to three months charge with just two hours of sunlight. It's efficient, secure, stylish with gold rated leather, and it features an RFID protection. So it really is the smart choice. Use code DONUT to get 5% off your next Exter purchase. And starting April 13th, Exter is running its Mother's Day promotion, giving an additional 20% off. For all you math whizzes out there, that's a total of 25% off starting April 13th. Now let's get back to the B2B, baby. <laughs> To understand electric turbos, we gotta understand traditional turbos. We all know that internal combustion engines make power by igniting a mixture of air and fuel. The more air and fuel that is burned, the more power that can be produced. If you want more power, you need more air. More air plus more fuel equals James. More power, baby. More power, baby. More power, baby. More power, baby. More power. So how do you get more air? with a compressor. They come in all shapes and sizes, but they all share the same purpose of jamming more air into your engine. But that compressor has to be powered by something. Superchargers, which are conceptually similar to turbos, are hooked up directly to the crankshaft, while turbos are driven by exhaust gases flowing out of the engine and through a turbine. That turbine is directly linked to a compressor fan. So as exhaust gases spin the turbine, the compressor spins, pulling in extra air. Simple enough, you guys are now skilled on how turbos and superchargers work. So conceptually, electric turbochargers should work in a similar way, but instead of being powered by exhaust gases or the crankshaft, they get powered by an electric motor via the battery. Seems like a reasonable way to power your compressor. So why doesn't it work? Many people might argue that the parasitic losses are too great, that the power required to run the electric turbo was more than the power gained from it. If that's a little confusing, don't worry, Jerry Berry's here to explain. Let's say you've got a car that, without any forced induction, produces about 200 horsepower. Now let's add a compressor that needs 20 horsepower to operate. In the case of the supercharger, that 20 horsepower load will be applied to the crankshaft, essentially taking 20 horsepower from the engine that could have been going to the wheels. This is known as parasitic loss. The good news is that the extra air you pump in lets you burn more fuel, resulting in more power. In this case, 100 horsepower more. So once everything is all said and done, your 200 horsepower engine is now producing 280 horsepower. Not too shabby. You gotta lay down 16 bucks a share at AMC, let it sink a little, sell, sell some, then rebuy back at a lower price and wait for it to go back up. To the moon. <laughs> now what if we use a turbo on the same 200 horsepower engine instead of a supercharger? 
Well, turbo doesn't pull its power from the crankshaft, but from exhaust gases being pushed out of the engine. This causes back pressure, which does place a load on your engine, but in our case, that might be as little as five horsepower. The other 15 horsepower is coming from energy that would have otherwise been going out the exhaust. So in the end, you're up to 295 horses, even better. A supercharger doesn't tap into that free, recycled, would-be wasted energy like the turbo does, which is why turbos are so much more efficient. So what would these parasitic losses look like in an electric turbo? If we use our example above, the 20 horsepower required by our compressor would convert to about 15 kilowatts. That's already a big problem because your average alternator can't even crank two kilowatts of power. But let's say that they made an alternator that could put out 15 kilowatts. We still have another problem. Alternators aren't very efficient. A decent one is around 60% efficient. So that brings us around 25 kilowatts of load to the engine or about 35 horsepower, significantly more than the equivalent supercharger or turbocharger. However, after that 100 horsepower gain, you would still have a net positive gain in power. The physics and math technically work out. Theoretically, an electric turbo is totally possible. But, and there's always a but, we have another problem. Getting 15 kilowatts out of a 12 volt system, and most cars are running on 12 volts, draws a lot of current, 1250 amps to be exact. That's reaching the levels a Tesla P100 draws, and that is the entire car. This is just a little baby 15 kilowatt turbo doesn't make sense. If we want to fix this, we'd have to bring in a higher voltage system with a separate generator, battery, and cabling, which, as you might have guessed, adds a lot of weight and in the end is going to be less practical and probably way more expensive than just sticking with a conventional supercharger or turbocharger. Battery tech is pretty good these days, though, and it makes it more feasible, at least for smaller turbos. Audi has released a few cars with electric turbos. They come with a 48 volt system in order to power the electric turbo's seven kilowatt motor. However, this electric turbo is supplementing the car's other traditional turbos. This is a common trend among OEMs exploring this tech, and it makes sense. An electric turbo can kick on quickly and provide instant boost, while a conventional turbo has to spin up from the exhaust gases, which can take a lot of time. You can skip the lag with an electric turbo, then switch to the conventional turbo once it's spooled up. Another approach to making an electric turbo is just bolt an electric motor onto a conventional turbo. You can use the electric motor to get the turbo to spool up quickly and then let the exhaust take over. The turbo even acts as a generator during deceleration. So yeah, all of this is impressive and cool and all, but so are those 12 volt aftermarket systems totally bogus? Well, not entirely. Hey guys, what's up? I got some big news and it's right here on my head. Introducing the first official donut beanie, only available at donutmedia.com. It comes in two awesome colors, vibrant orange for those who wanna stand out during the day and navy blue for those who wanna blend in at the night. And the best thing about a beanie, no matter who you are, it can help highlight your personality. Whether you're intimidating at first, but once you get to know you, you're a really nice person. Or if you're someone who always has that band that your friends never heard of and you're shocked and you make them listen to them right away. <laughs> Just like sort of an old poetic soul kind of type. An actor slash writer slash director slash musician. I own an acoustic guitar. The Donut Beanie is the perfect hat for any occasion or any type of person. Get yours at DonutMedia.com today. <laughs> today. <laughs> There are some aftermarket electric turbos that are legit, but they might not work the way you think. These e-turbos come with a 48 volt battery that your car charges, and then you discharge that battery when you want to boost. So you definitely do get boost, but it's not sustained boost. It can only run for a maximum of four minutes. Now four minutes, you can do a lot of freaking sick burnies in four minutes. That's plenty of time to show off to your buds or your girls or your buds girls, but you've gotta let your battery cool down and recharge after. And to get those four minutes back, you're going to have to wait 40 minutes. There it is, there's the catch. We figured it out. So how on earth did electric turbos leap from eBay scam to legit? Well, most of the OEM e-turbos are more likely electronically assisted turbos. And these aftermarket ones aren't a scam, but they're not as legit as they seem at first glance. In the end, getting power directly from the crankshaft or better yet from wasted exhaust is just going to be more efficient. The facts are the facts though. Is it a turbo? Yes. Well, a compressor really, but is it solely run on electricity? Yes. Does it give you boost? 
Yes, these aftermarket electric turbos may have a lot of downsides, but if you wanna just make more power, there's actually an aftermarket turbo that'll let you do that. If I'm being for real, you guys, it's pretty awesome. Also, just to clarify, I wasn't wrong in that meeting, I just wasn't right. Okay, there's a difference. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. If you want even more donut content, become a Donut Underground follower. Donut Underground is a membership for our diehard donut fans where they can meet more car enthusiasts and get special content that we just can't show you on the channel. You can chat with us in the Discord, you get stickers, freaking fun ass time, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow us here at Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me, at Jeremiah Burton. And until next week, bye for now.